All right, guys, let's talk some batteries. If you watch my last two videos, you by now have two groups of batteries, the good ones that pass the test and the bad ones. What do you do with the bad ones? You recycle them, send them to the recycler. But congratulations, you've saved all these ones, all the good ones from going to the recycler. So now what do you do next? Well, let's design the perfect battery for your application. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about designing the perfect battery. You gotta ask yourself, why do you need all these batteries? Why are you doing all this work? What do you want to do with them? Whatever you want to do, you gotta keep in mind that these are dead cells from dead laptop batteries. They're past their point where they're considered useful for most people. Yeah, even at two amp hours, like the ones that I was getting for my bus, uh, they are past the 70% capacity, the 70% of the original capacity point. So technically they're dead cells. There should be no good for anyone. But you and I know that they are good and you can use them pretty much to do anything. You can use these cells to power pretty much anything you want to power. Whether you want to use them to power a small flashlight or you want to make a small power bank to power some small appliance, all the way to powering an entire city. You, these batteries can do it, but you will have to design the proper arrangement for them to be able to work because remember, these are not gonna perform like new batteries because they're not. These are near end of life cells. And so you have to keep that in mind. So what do you do? It's actually very simple. All right, take my Samba for example. Originally I wanted to use these cells to power the Samba. And so in order to do that, I'd have to think about the power consumption of my vehicle. My Samba uses a system that, that uses 130 volts and at peak can use up to 650 amps. Uh, that's about 80 kilowatts. And so what I needed to do was design a battery that can easily handle the 80 kilowatt peak power consumption of my Samba and the 22 kilowatt uh, continuous consumption that the Samba would do going down the road at 60 miles an hour. And so in order to do that, I designed uh, a battery that was going to be 150 cells in parallel uh, and 30 cells uh, in series. That's about 4,600 cells and it would yield a size about 35 kilowatt hours. And so you think about 80 kilowatts for a few seconds, each cell would see about six amps, but continuously would only see about 1.3 amps. So I was gonna be asking off of each cell about one amp, 1.3 amps, which is roughly just a little bit over half a C. And so the reason why I did that is because I knew that these cells, the easier I am on them, then the better chance that they're gonna last a long time, even if they have a short amount of cycles left in them. And so that's what you have to do for your battery and for your, your application. You have to look at what your load is gonna be, whatever you're gonna power, you have to look at what the load is, and then uh, design the battery at least twice that size. So if you have, if your load is 10 kilowatts, then I would say you build a 20 kilowatt hour pack so that at least it lasts two hours and you're uh, always asking less than one C out of these cells. When they're new, you can ask a lot more. In fact, some of these cells, some of these Sonys, some of the ones that people used to vape, they could ask like three, four, five, six, ten 10 times the C rating uh, on the battery. Of course, you don't wanna do that here. That's how you're going to operate these cells in a safe manner. And that's how it's gonna be worth it for you doing all this work and you're not gonna kill it, you know, within six months after you start using them. Cause you're gonna go easy on the cells. The cells are gonna be comfortable. Uh, they're you're not gonna stress them and hopefully they'll last a long time. And um, your investment, your time investment in this project, then it's gonna be worth it. Once you figure that out and you figure how big your pack is, then you have to then you have to ask yourself, what is the voltage 
range that you have to operate. And then that's what's gonna determine uh, how many cells in parallel, how many cells in series you are going to need. In next video, we'll explore some typical examples and then we'll figure out together what is the best cell arrangement to, to design the proper battery so that, so that we can reach our goal. All right, so see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And of course, don't forget to become our patron if you like what I'm doing here. Thank you to all our patrons. Uh, you make it possible for me to do what I'm doing. So thank you for that. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Okay. We're gonna go on the track right now. We're going on track. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, do you see that dude? Spider out on the